How are you doing guys and welcome to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel my name is Joshua Dangle George a social media marketing online coach and in this video I'm going to show you a snippet of a live stream that I previously did in my new Facebook group called the agency scale and fast track community and uh, basically what I'm going to be doing during this live stream is going over a few plays from the free playbook that you actually get uh, when you join the group on how you can get clients for your social media marketing agency with paid traffic. So we'll be going over things like lead generation campaigns as well as conversion campaigns so that regardless of where you're at with your agency, you know there is a campaign that you can set up and there's a campaign that you can get results with. So without further ado, let's hop into it. No, I don't waste no time. Hey guys, we are live. Hope everyone is doing well. For those of you that are watching on the live stream, feel free to leave a comment. If you're watching this on the replay, um, comments replay below. And for those that are watching this on YouTube, um, feel free to leave a comment below the YouTube channel as well. And for those of you that are watching on YouTube and you have not yet joined uh, the Facebook group, make sure you check it out on YouTube. It will be linked in the first comment um, of the video, but without rambling on too much, let's hop into it. So what we're going to be talking about on today's stream is how you can get uh, clients for your agency with paid traffic. So clients with paid traffic and the great thing about getting clients with paid traffic is obviously the the hands-off uh, approach right so we don't need to uh, be doing manual outreach and so on and so forth but the great thing about it as well is that the whole dynamic of the conversation changes so of course one of the easy ways to sort of see know what it is that the client wants is when you actually get on a call with these clients is to ask them okay what prompted you to actually hop on this call today and the thing is when you're the one reaching out to them you're sending them an email you're reaching out to them and then you get onto that call and you ask them okay what's the reason for you hopping on this call or what's the reason for you booking this call today they're going to give you a weird look, right? They're going to say, well, hang on, you reached out to me. You know, don't be trying all this, this, you know, reverse psychology stuff on me. You were the one that reached out to me. You had a pitch, go for it. And it just positions you in a, a position of, well, it positions them in a position of leverage, really. And you're the one that's having to do the pitching and the selling. With paid traffic, that is not the case. Yes, they've seen your ad. And chances are they've you know clicked on your ads and that is how they've booked a call but because of that you've done nothing so they've taken the action they were the ones that actually did um you know the the, the, the booking of the call and so on and so forth and this has got to do with a concept of marketing versus sales and i've obviously got to give credit where credit is due this is um from brandon c who was the one that taught taught me this concept and basically, there's this spectrum, right? You've got marketing on the one hand and sales on the other hand. Now, let's say you're doing a cold call, a cold email, and so on and so forth. There's not a lot of marketing, um, you know, taking place apart from the fact that you know you've rang up the phone or you've sent them an email and so on and so forth. So, marketing, is, you know, there's not a lot of marketing there. So that means a lot of selling has to be done to get that client over the line. Whereas if, for example, they have come through paid traffic, then you know that line might actually be here because they've seen your ad, they've seen maybe testimonials or anything like that. Um, so that means that less selling is needed to get this client over the line. Now, let's say rather than an ad, they've come through a referral. So they know who you are, what you can do, what you're capable of, etc. So all of the marketing has already been done, or all of the selling, I should say, really. So less selling from you on that call is needed. So the quicker you can get 
to the point where less selling is needed, the more sales you will basically close and the more clients you will get. Okay, so that is just a quick um, high level overview of what, we try, what we're trying to get at here with the marketing and sales, okay? So the more marketing you can do on the front end, the less sales is needed on the back end. And I just want you guys to keep that in mind um, while we're on this stream because that will also be important for how we set up these campaigns and what needs to be done when you do set up these campaigns, okay? So marketing and sales. The more marketing you can do, the less sales is needed. The less marketing you do, the more selling is needed, okay? So the first approach I wanna discuss is Facebook lead form. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll spare you guys the, the typing. I'll just, uh, or the writing, I'll just type it out. So Facebook lead forms, okay? That is method number one. Now, of course, Facebook lead forms is known for um, a quantity approach. You know, you will get a lot of people fill out the form, but the quality will not necessarily always be there. However, nowadays, uh, Facebook lead forms are sort of making a comeback. Why? Because everything happens on the Facebook platform. So with a Facebook lead form, they click on an ad. When they click on the ad, um, rather than sending them to a website off of Facebook, they will actually get a pop-up where they can fill out their name, the email address, and so on and so forth. And then from there, they will get a thank you page, again, all still on the Facebook platform, okay? So everything here happens on Facebook. Now, the great thing about that is there is no third-party tracker needed, there's no Facebook pixel needed, and so on and so forth, because everything happens on Facebook. Everything that happens on Facebook can obviously be controlled by Facebook as well. So we don't need to track what happens on other websites. Therefore, there is no opting out of tracking. There's no issues with iOS 14. So you can basically track 100% of the data. Everything that happens with that Facebook lead form, you can see in your ads manager. And that is why it's now slowly making a comeback. So the great thing about the lead form as well is that you can get a lot of leads right off the bat. So what Facebook will do is it will show your ads that are most likely, uh, to people that are most likely to actually become a lead. So within, let's say your audience, let's say this is the audience that you wanna target, um, just for example purposes, let's say this is everyone in the US, okay, that we wanna target. Why would it not let me type the A? There you go, the worst A. Ever. I'm probably best just sticking to when I'm typing using the, 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 the typewriter thing. Um, so then let's say this is the US and we run a Facebook ad and we choose the objective lead generation. Then you will see in the ads that your potential reach is X amount of people, right? Um, but that does not mean that you will reach every single one within that audience. So what Facebook will do is it will actually pick out a small pocket of people that are most likely within the audience that you select to fill out your lead form. And that is why I always shy away from the traffic objective or the reach objective um, or the awareness objective because what Facebook will do is it will actually show your ads to people that are most likely to click on it um, if you know we're going for the traffic objective. So it'll show your ads to a pool of people within the audience you select that are most likely to just click, but not necessarily do anything else after that. It's only when you actually select a conversion objective that Facebook will actually show your ads to people that are most likely to you know, convert into something that you want. So a sale, a lead, a registrant, and so on and so forth, okay? So that potential reach that you see on your ads does not necessarily mean, let me just get it up, potential reach, X amount, that does not necessarily mean that your ad, your campaign will actually reach all of those people. It will only reach the people that basically meet your objective. Now, another side note to that, obviously now with iOS 14, uh, people can actually opt out of tracking, etc. So the potential reach of, in this case, the US is X amount, my apology for not knowing what the potential reach is for the US on Facebook. Um, and then within that audience, Facebook will pick out 
the pockets of people that are most likely to actually become you know a conversion but then within that a percentage of those people might actually have opted out to track them so your reach in reality is actually much lower than the potential reach that facebook gives you so the pocket of people is actually only this amount which is much less than previously and um, you know, at the moment, obviously, you know, some metrics say it's only 30%. Some people say it's, it's all up to 70%. Because it's still so early, we can't accurately say how many people have actually opted out, how many people have opted in. And of course, not everyone has upgraded to iOS 14 just yet. There are still devices on older, um, on older software. And of course, uh, not everyone has an iPhone. So it's a bit up in the air how much uh, or how many people, I should say, have opted out. But the potential reach is actually much lower than you think it is. That is why going forward for a lot of our clients, we've also gone for very broad uh, targeting. So rather than um, in the case of, I don't know, people, let's say we've got a supplement company, rather than targeting uh, people interested in bodybuilding and then the next ad set being people interested in fitness and the next ad set being people interested in CrossFit and so on and so forth, rather than doing that, we've actually just gone, okay, the whole of the US, the whole of the UK, the whole of Ireland, and then running that on CBO, which stands for Campaign Budget Optimization, and then letting Facebook find those people that are most likely to convert. Because if you just select the whole of the US, like I said, because we've selected the conversion objective in this example, I'll get back to the Facebook lead forms in just a second, then within the whole of the US, Facebook's gonna pick out a pocket of people. But if you're also then gonna say, okay, so people in the US that are most likely to convert, that are interested in bodybuilding, that might go even smaller again. And then you've got the percentage of people that have opted out. So that is what you want to prevent. Facebook just starts to retarget these very micro audiences and just the frequency will go up, your CPM will go up, your cost per click will go up and your conversion rate will go down. So if you give Facebook more room to optimize, Facebook will actually find you those audiences that you want to uh, to reach out to and to target, okay? So that is it in terms of the conversion stuff. Um, like I said, just a quick side note here. In terms of the Facebook lead forms, Facebook will find people that are most likely to become a lead. And then what you can do to actually increase the quality of the Facebook lead form is you can ask more questions. So let's say you ask for name, email address, and telephone number, and you notice, okay, I'm getting a lot of people through this flow. You know, the cost per lead is low, um, my cost per click is low, my you know, click-through rate is, is high, etc but the quality just is not there, then what you can just do is just add more questions and basically find the balance between the amount of questions and the quality of your audience. Because just think, if someone is not 100% committed to booking a call with you, they're not gonna sit there through a 10 page uh, or 10 question questionnaire or 12 question survey or anything like that, if they're not, like I said, if they're not really serious about it. But if they really do want to hop on a call with your agency, if they really do want to see what you've got to offer, then they will actually take the time to fill out all those questions. So if you've got more questions in your lead form, you'll notice that yes, you'll get less people through the flow, but the people that do come through the flow, they'll be more serious because they've taken the time, they've invested the time to fill out that form, okay? So if you want quantity, then the Facebook lead form is a great way of, or a great starting point, I should say. If you want it, if you want the quantity, but you want to increase the quality, you know, regardless, then just add more questions to the lead form. And here's a little secret for you guys as well. On that thank you page, on the Facebook lead form, there's actually a button where you can send them to another part, either on Facebook or you know on another website, etc. What we do is we actually send them to Calendly, okay? So that's a little secret for you guys here. What we say on the Facebook lead form is obviously, hey, free call, um, you know, a free consultation, anything like that. They fill out the Facebook lead form on Facebook and then on that thank you page, we say, okay, you're not done yet. Confirm your time in Calendly to receive your free consultation. That then sends them to Calendly where they can actually you know, book in a time that works best for them. This has increased our response rate. It's increased our show up rate, of course, because someone that's filled out the lead form hasn't necessarily booked in a call just yet. Um, and what we also have, again, another secret for you guys, is the thank you page of Calendly is actually um, just one big social proof Congo line of results. So. 
they have come in as a lesser quality lead. They've clicked on the ads because you know Facebook knows they are most likely to become a lead. They filled out a few questions. Um, then they see this page and say, you're not done yet. If they are committed, they will click on the Calendly link. And then from there, they will actually book in a time that works for them. So again, another micro commitment. And then they have this page, the thank you page, that has all of our results, all of our testimonials. It's got um, both screenshots as well as video testimonials. It's got how we work, who we are, what we do, and so on and so forth. So when we think back to the marketing versus sale spectrum, um, when they start out, there's not a lot of marketing being done apart from a free consultation click here, okay? But then once they go through the flow, this needle actually pushes further to the right because they see our thank you page, they see the testimonials, they see the results that we've gotten previously, so they know more about us, more about what we can do, and more about what we are capable of. And then on that call, we no longer need to say, hey, have you viewed our portfolio? Because they already have done, it was on that thank you page, okay? So that is method number one. Quick side note, this is the method that we are currently doing as well for our agency. Um, getting very good results with that. It's not as easy as I'm trying to make out here. Um, I'm not trying to make out it is easy, but it's not as easy as you know. I'm, I'm writing it out here. The reason why it's working for us as well as it is, is because we have a very, very specific niche. Everything is tailored towards that niche. And because we are targeting that niche, I think currently we are one of the only ones that are actually targeting this niche properly with the results to back it up. You know, I've noticed a few people have been trying it. There's actually been an, uh, there's actually a, an agency that's copied everything we've done onto the domain and you know they're trying to do exactly what we're doing, but they can't because they haven't got the results to back it up. Um, anyway, method number two is a method that we've gotten very, very good results with previously. The only reason why I've actually gone for method number one now is it's basically a sandbox test. You know, we're just testing out which one of the two in the long run is actually going to generate us the best results. So method number two is the conversion objective. Again, I'll spare you guys. Um, where is my eraser? I'll spare you guys me typing it out. Conversion. Um, campaign I'll call this conversion campaign one okay and conversion campaign one is obviously the conversion objective so we don't select lead generation we select conversion and then what we do we have the Facebook ad we then drive people off of Facebook to a landing page let me just move that over there there we go and that landing page Basically, where is my smart? It's not this one, the smart pen. Oh, there we go, smart drawer. So the landing page, so add landing page. That landing page has one big ginormous button that, that gets them to book a call. So that landing page has a button that sends them to Canally. Canally is, in this case, it's embedded into our funnel, which I'll get into in just a second. And then on the back of that, there's the thank you page, okay? And that thank you page is the same thank you page as here. So it's got all the results, it's got all of the testimonials and so on and so forth, okay? So add, landing page, Calendly page, thank you page. Now, as I mentioned, because we are driving traffic from Facebook to a page outbound, so you know another website, we actually need the Facebook pixel for this. So what I have actually done Obviously, you know, the pixel is on every single page here. But then what we want to do is we actually want to track, okay, how many people are going through this flow? So the metric that I use for the ads to the landing page is called the outbound click-through rate. I've got entire videos on this. Um, I'm not going to go into all of that on this, on this stream. But the outbound click-through rate is basically the percentage of people that click on the ads go off of Facebook onto another website, which in this case is our landing page. So that's what we use to track uh, and to monitor the performance of the ads. Then on the landing page, I've got the uh, view content pixel event. So every single page has got the base pixel, but then we've got the view content pixel events on the uh, landing page. What I'm gonna just quickly do guys, because I've noticed that with the smart drawing, it's not actually as, uh, as clean and as clear as I want it to be. So I'll just type this all out just so it's easier for you guys. So outbound. CTR is this one here. 
and then what I'll do is I'll just erase all this mess here. There we go. And then on the landing page, view content. Why? Because that way we can distinguish those that are just randomly viewing a page from those that are on that landing page and actually viewing, um, you know, viewing that page. Then on our Calendly form, we've got lead. And what you guys need to understand as well, these, these events, these codes, it's just binary. It's ones and zeros, right? So just because I put leads on the Calendly page, you know, it does not increase the quality of traffic or anything like that. So what it basically does with the pixel, people go through this flow. Once, if you have the view content on the landing page, then once they hit that page, the view content will just show a one in the ad account. Same goes for leads. You know, lead will show a one in the ad accounts because they've been on that page. So it will track the traffic on that page. If we put pages on this page, for example, pages will show one in the ad account. Okay. So just because you put pages somewhere, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to track anything, you know, or increase the quality of anything. It's just binary ones and zeros. Okay. So um, view content, lead, and then what I've actually thought, uh, got on the thank you page is called complete registration. And then what I'm doing with the ads is I'm optimizing for complete registration. So when I set up my conversion objective, I tell Facebook, okay, I wanna track com complete registration. So what Facebook will do is it will go out and find people that are most likely to become a complete registration. And you know, at the start, it's called the learning phase. You know, it's, it's, there's a, basically a learning phase within the Facebook campaigns. Uh, and you need 50 events within seven days for Facebook to successfully, re, you know, get out of the learning phase. But what Facebook will do during that learning phase is it will analyze the people that are clicking onto your ads, clicking on your landing page, clicking on your lead. And as soon as someone does complete registration, there's a feedback loop. So that gets fed back to Facebook and then Facebook learns, okay, um, this person, John, um, you know, he was a, re a registrant, he completed the registration. John's uh, interests are X, Y, and Z. John is age, you know, whatever. John is current location is this. John is active as this, and so on and so forth. So it learns from, in this case, John. And then what it'll do over time is it'll try and find more people like John because they know, okay, if John's a registrant, then people with the same interests and behaviors as John will most likely become a registrant as well. And obviously, John is just one example. Um, as soon as you get 50 registrants, you know, Facebook has completed that feedback loop. And then Facebook knows exactly you know, who's most likely to become a registrant in this case. Okay, so that is how you can track every step of the flow, how the feedback loop with Facebook works, and how you can set up a conversion campaign within Facebook. So that is method number two. Um, and as I mentioned, in terms of the marketing and sales, they reach the same thank you page. So you know they that marketing path basically gets moved up. Um, and you know less sales is needed, but even less sales again than the Facebook lead form because they also see our landing page. So they've seen our website, they know what we can do um, on the landing page. Obviously, you, know, you can have uh, maybe a small video, maybe you know some results, how you guys work, and so on and so forth. So there's more commitment needed from them to go off of Facebook, stop scrolling, you know, go through this. And obviously, there's there's one, there's two, there's three steps here that they need to click through. You know, so. Um, there's less sales needed with the conversion campaign as it is with the Facebook lead form, but still, you know, um, I wouldn't say it's all the way down to the, to the, to the sales part. You know, there is still a bit of sales to be done. Then the most expensive one of the three, but probably the one where, um, the least sales is needed because the most marketing is done on the front end is a case study funnel. So with a case study funnel, we again choose the conversion objective. And then what we have is a ad that takes people to a opt-in page. So opt, again, I'll uh, save you guys the typing, opt-in page. On that opt-in page, they can leave their name and email address. So um, let me just quickly get it up here, name and email address. And then once they fill that in, they are sent to a live room, what I like to call it, or basically just the case study room. So on that, on that live room, they've got a video and that video is anywhere from 20 to 60 minutes long. 
and it explains everything about your agency, who you are, what you do, what you're capable of, and so on and so forth. Basically the same as a thank you page in the previous two examples, but just in more depth and detail. That video has a call to action to book a call. So at the 60 minute mark, there'll be a button and that will send them to Canonly. So basically the, the lead page on um, campaign two. So Canonly, and then they've got the thank you page, thank you page which you can have complete registration on if you want. So I'll just type out the events here, complete registration. We'll have that on that thank you page. So people that have, um, you know, basically opted in, that's complete registration. And then what we can do here is have view content on the opt-in page. And then it's up to you, of course, like if you want to change these around, that's completely fine with me, of course. Then we can have leads on the Canly page and then it's completely up to you. You can have maybe um, contact, something like that in the live room. Or if you want, because it, it depends on what I would do in this case is I will probably, like if these were the events that we'd go for, I'd probably optimize this flow for contact because we just want to get as many people in that live room as possible. And then what we need to do is work out how many people out of 100 actually end up booking a call. So let's say that video um, converts at 1%, then we know for every 100 people that see that video, one person will actually book a call. And then if you know, okay, so one call, um, let's say you've, just for the sake of this example, you've got a 100% closing rate and uh, one call equals one client, your retainer is a thousand a month. Um, again, just for the sake of example, a client only stays one month. It's only one, one month, one retainer, a thousand. Um, then we know, okay, so one call equals a thousand. We need a hundred people in to get the one call. Then we know, okay, um, with these metrics, if we can get a hundred people in for 10 euros, dollars, pounds a pop, that means we spent a thousand on the front end, we gain a thousand on the back end. So then this means we break even. And then of course you can either upsell them or increase the lifetime value of a customer. Uh, increase your retainer, increase your conversion rate. There's so many things you can do once you hit that point, okay? Um, so I will probably optimize for contact in this case. If you want to move these metrics around, maybe optimize, you know, have leads events on this page uh, and then optimize for lead, that's completely up to you. But this is where, like I said, you know, if you go back to this point here, I'll just move all of these out of the way. So with that case study, you hardly need to do any selling because all the selling is done prior to that. So they've watched you know, the case study, they've been onto your website, they've seen the testimonials, they know who you are, what you do, they know the entire process, and then they've booked a call. So it's like they already know everything about you, and then on that actual call, less selling is needed because they already know everything they need to know. You've explained how it works, all you need to do from that point on is just hop on a quick call with them and sell them on your service, okay? So Facebook lead forms is out of the three, you know, a quantity approach, I'd say, and more selling is needed, the more qualifying is needed. The conversion campaign is a nice, you know, bit of middle ground. It's just a landing page where they can click to book in a call and then the thank you page, you know, basically pre-frames them on what they can expect. And then the case study page is the one where you'll get the highest quality leads book calls, but this will probably be the most expensive flow as well. I would say, uh, based on experience, it will cost you around $300 a call booked, okay? So if you've got a, let's say, a 30% closing rate, um, then it will cost you around 1000 to get a new client. But um, our lifetime value of a client now, I think, is around the eight-month mark. So that means we spend 1000 on the front end to generate 8000 on the back end. So, you know, it is a very profitable approach if you do this with those numbers that I've just mentioned, okay? If you can get calls booked for, let's say, $100 a pop, which, you know, is possible. We've actually done that in April, um, I think, with like 76 euros a call. Um, it's, again, because we're very niche down, right? There's not a lot of people in our industry that are doing this or in our niche that are doing this. Um, so, you know, obviously that was insanely, insanely profitable. And then you'll notice that because it's costing less to acquire a customer, you're actually gaining much more money on the back end. Okay, but that is it for now. Any questions about these flows, please don't hesitate to reach out. Like I said, if you guys are watching this 
on the replay, feel free to send me a message on Facebook. Um, or if you're watching this live now and you've got any questions, just message me right away on Facebook. If you're watching this on YouTube and you want to be part of these live streams, then feel free to join the AZ Scale and Fast Track Facebook group, which is completely free. You'll get access to the AZ Scale and Fast Track playbook as well, um, where we basically explain exactly you know how we run ads, how you can scale your ads, how you can get better results for your clients so that you can charge more. Um, you know, have less hassle with your agency and truly scale your agency to the next level. With well, that said, I'm going to wrap up this video here. Thank you so much for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe for those who are on YouTube. For those who are in the Facebook group, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Careful, careful.